Yes, yes, team. A huge welcome to the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Today, we have one of my private clients. We have Darren Hill. He is one of the utmost experts when it comes to trader and trading education. He owns the, the Powell Mastermind. Uh, on top of that, he's built another prop firm company, uh, and he's just an all-round incredible, incredible dude. Darren, mate, so thank you so much for agreeing to come on to the podcast. Thank uh, you for the humble introdu- introduction. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do we, um, if you can give some people uh, an insight, what is it that you do? So ultimately we trade using algorithms, our proprietary, um, trading bots, if you want to call them that. Um, but unlike, I guess, others that provide, um, trading bots, we actually add the, the coaching, the support, the education, um, the mindset training, um, and all that we, we wrap all that together into one solution because ultimately I think there's a big misconception that people can buy a trading robot from somewhere and live happily ever after when ultimately, you know, how to use it properly is key for long-term sustainable success. But the, the biggest jigsaw for anyone to be a successful trader is always going to be their mindset. Um, hence why I guess we first met because I reached out to you to say, Hey, do you want to come and do some masterminds within power? Cause I think it will fit really, really well. And it did. Um, yeah. And then I started to work with you personally from that point on as well. Yeah. And well, let's go into that while we're here. What was it that made you go? Yeah. You know what? Like I'm interested in this stuff. I want to, I want to open the, open the rabbit hole into my psychology. Well, I, I think ultimately, I knew that this is such a big jigsaw puzzle for my community to try and add in. And I guess I'm so passionate about everyone getting results that, you know, that investment was just to you to add value to my community that that are already there. And I think the challenge with most people in my industry is what they think they need, sorry, what they think they want versus what they need. There's a total disconnect. So, the mindset stuff's not very sexy, not very glamorous. There's no Lamborghinis, you know, there's no get rich quick. It's all right. You got to do the work. Mm. And I've always had the mindset of self-development, um, hungry to learn stuff. And, you know, it was always going to be right. This is going to add value. It was a matter of how much value, what does it look like? And I guess I live by curiosity. So, through curiosity comes, I guess, new learnings, new insights, new awareness, but it only helps if you can implement it and it makes a lasting change. I've, I've probably in the past been guilty of a little bit of mental masturbation at times, you know, it's by the courses and you, and you, you know, you seek out all this information and education, but actually getting the stuff done, how many of us have bought a course and not actually done it? Um, so I think, what attracted me was obviously seeing what you spoke about during the mastermind, but also that accountability bit along the way, because without that, the work and the change and the transformation or the improvement doesn't probably, it doesn't happen, does it? Yeah. That on the, on the one-to-one level, you know, um, you can't be having somebody sat opposite you live on a call one-to-one listening and holding up mirrors and observing yeah. blind spots as to what's really going on underneath the hood. And I do think there's only so many, there's only so far you can go over course. A course is really good to start out as a sort of, of a learner topic. But when you're looking at, you know, some of the deeper sides, having a mentor in front of you to ask you those questions and hold up those mirrors, you, you just, you just can't yeah. beat. Um, what were some of the blind spots that you noticed, perhaps from our first couple of conversations, that you realised, oh, this this is probably holding me back as a, as an entrepreneur? Yeah, loads. Um, I made some little notes here because obviously, when you're under pressure, sometimes this stuff might not come. But there was some real light bulb moments along the way, and I guess ultimately having that mirror and that awareness is is vital because then you can explore it and you can you can delve into it unwrap it 
have some challenging questions to reflect upon. And, and I think we, we all are guilty and more, some more than others who obviously don't, I guess, invest in themselves in these sorts of programs. We can just meander. We can just meander through life. We can live subconsciously and we never actually take a pause and check out. So the, these one-to-ones in the, the format and having that, uh, you know, that them intimate hours where you really drill down, they enable you to check out from the subconscious meandering, doing what we do to actually then really check in and then live consciously and, and, and have them deep reflections that enable you to go, Hey, do you know what? Yeah, that is something that I need to work on or explore or what's behind that. So what I was curious about really starting out was where my hunger drive ambition sort of sits. Mm. And that, that can lead into a lack of contentment, a lack of gratitude, because it, it's always like success is something in the future when actually it can be something in the here and now or in the past, but it's this chasing. So, you know, from 17, 18 years old, my first job was working in Burton's on Lincoln High Street. And I was like, right, how do I get the next job? How do I get the next job? And then I got into the motor trade. So I've been 20 years um, in the automotive industry and from sales to running, you know, big operations, running the whole business and leading big, uh, leading big teams. But I've always had the, right, what's next? Right, so sales, sales manager, general manager, director, you know, and it's like, why, why, what, you know, what is there in me that is feeling like that that needs to happen? And I think a lot of the stuff we reflect upon, reflected upon was the, the gratification, um, the people pleasing, the, sometimes we're brought up as kids maybe. And it's like, mom or dad says, oh, you know, I'm proud of you for doing that. And it's like, well, you don't have to be proud because of the thing you can be proud without the thing mm. so you you actually label who you are or your success as an identity thing in terms of what you achieved not who you are and i'm i'm very conscious of that being a, a dad to five and it's like my five-year-old comes home and she gets eight out of ten and oh you know you're proud of me well i'd be proud of you if you got one out of ten that doesn't change how much I love you, how proud of you I am, but well done, you know. Uh, so it's those sort of things, really. I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but um, yeah, really reflective to try and work out what is the underlying reason, motive, because once you can acknowledge it, you can then be conscious of actually, am I chasing that thing because of this? Is that really going to serve me? Am I doing it for the right reasons? And if nobody knew about it, would I still do it? Which is, there's loads of like mm -hmm. one-liners that Kieran's dropped with me over the last six months. I've got them all written down. They're probably going to get tattooed at some point um, because they're really bloody good, you know. One-liners I love because in a moment you can just have an instant moment of clarity because it's like, oh, yeah. So that well, one you mentioned there, if no one else could know, would I still want it? Mm. That, that one for me, I always ask myself, whenever I find myself craving something, I want to go and yeah. do this. I want to go and have this. All right. Well, if no one else could know about it, would I still want it? And if the answer is, uh, if, if, if the answer is yes, then I know, yeah, I, I want that thing. If the answer is no, yeah. then I've got to look at myself in the mirror and go, why well, am I doing this for me? Or am I doing this? Or is it for ego me? led, you know, and it's yeah. all of that stuff. And that's fascinating because I think the online world, especially in my industry and I love the online world because you can create a business, you can make new contacts. The world is a big place, but I also hate it. Um, at some times, you know, being able to disconnect or set boundaries is tougher, but also in my space, there are just so I'm, sh I'm sure it happens everywhere. You know, personal trainers, everyone gets the shitty comments and you have to really build a, a barrier to that, which I found really hard at times because it's sort of, it, it, it it pushes on you. Um, but yeah, there are a load of people in the world that, you know, wouldn't say that to your face, but they can hide behind, you know, comments on a, on a Facebook post. Mm. 
The online world is interesting because never in history have we ever been uh, exposed to so much stimulus in, in one moment. Mm. So if we look at the history of comparison, or if we look at the history of imposter syndrome and whatever, uh, we as human beings used to really only compete with the people in our tribe, right? So we only used to compare to the Joneses down the road or, or whatever. Yeah. But now we've got these little glass boxes. And in these little glass boxes, you are instantly looking through the window into a billionaire's house or somebody traveling in Bali, yeah. or somebody having a six pack or Bukayo Saka scoring an absolute screamer in the last 10 minutes of a match for Arsenal or whatever that, that yeah. is, but that's not real. So you, mm. we, we get lost in all of this noise and all of this distraction because the internet is a noisy, noisy place. And when you're in such a noisy, distracted place, and then on top of that, you end up in a place of, distraction and ego and well, where do I fit into all of this yeah. and, and people leave comments and whatever that can be really quite overwhelming and mm -hmm. the people that will win in 2024 are the ones that are going to be able to cut out that noise and have yeah cool calm clarity clarity in who they are clarity in their thinking clarity on okay well why am I making these decisions and why am I doing this versus just Oh, well, this person's doing this, so I've got to do this. Or, oh, this is happening here, so I've got to do this. And it is yeah. cutting out that noise. And that can be hard, particularly when you've got this little glass box you keep looking into every five minutes. But creating that space is really, really important. Yeah, I think it, 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 what I talk about sometimes is this comparison versus inspiration thing. And I struggle with the barley stuff because I'd be like, oh, I, that looks really better than the UK wet, cold weather. But, um, I think we can we can very easily fall into the trap of what others are doing. Uh, like in my space, someone who might start trading three months ago is looking at what traders that have been doing it five, 10, 15 years are doing and wondering why they're not there yet. Yet they don't see or haven't seen what that trader's struggle was. So it's like the iceberg effect. You can only see everything. You don't see everything under the water. You only see the success bit at the top. And... I think if we, if people can just be aware of, of compare yourself to your previous version, where you was last week, last month, last year, but you could use where others are as inspiration. So if you can separate the two, hey, that inspires me. I'm not going to compare myself to them because they're at a different chapter of their story to where I am. But actually, where's my progression? Am I moving forward or am I dropping back? And in trading, sometimes the results might not match your progress that you're making because there's a lot of probability at play like poker. You could work really hard at learning poker and enter a tournament and get a bad beat in the first two hands. And that doesn't mean that you've not made progress. It just meant that that result was merely probability and traders sometimes get a total disconnect between what's probable and what's possible. And the fact that you need to measure progress outside of the outcome that they actually achieve, uh, you know, achieve. Um, so, so many people struggle with that and then, you know, we'll quit what, and move on to the next thing. What, um, for our audience, what would you say the biggest pitfalls on a mindset perspective are for traders and where, where do they go wrong? Cause I, I believe it doesn't matter what field you're in, there are a series of traits, mm. behaviors, thoughts, yeah. and feelings that successful, um, unsuccessful people will follow. So I'm really curious to see from a trading perspective to see if they translate over into into my world with with TMP and what we do with coaches and entrepreneurs. Yeah, it's fascinating. So for me, it's all about decision making. Everything we do is a decision. So where we are now is a is a, as a result of the decisions we've made in the past. And where we want to go in the future will be a consequence of the results we get on the decisions we continue to make. And I think there's so many facets. I built a bit of a, a model of this for my traders when I did a decision making training. And I think there's some key ingredients that go, that go into it. The first thing is the self-awareness piece, because if we're not aware, we're not pausing, we're not checking in with our emotions, what the consequences of certain decisions might be, then the decision is always going to be flawed. Mm. We've then got resilience and grit. You know, those two things come hand in hand from a short term and a long term perspective. So 
again, we could have two traders, trader A, trader B, the same event happens to both traders. They both take a loss in the market. Trader A is resilient and they've probably worked on that through habits, routines, health, fitness, um, whatever serves them. They're managing stress. They're getting good sleep. They're self-aware. Their shit's in order. Trader B is chasing the pound notes. Probably poor sleep, maybe loads of stress elsewhere. So Trader A handles it and just continues with the process and handles the loss and comes out the other end. And Trader B loses his shit, throws his toys out the pram, revenge trades, and that has a downward effect. So the same event happened, and the only difference was resilience, self-awareness, and the decisions that they made. Um, so ultimately, yeah, I think... Can you just touch on a revenge trade for a second? Because I, I, you've told me this, this is before, but I think mm. it's really interesting for everyone listening. It's like, what's a revenge trade? So a revenge trade will be, let's say we enter a trade now and we take a loss, and that trader reacts to that loss in a like a tilt way. So they didn't expect to lose. So that the other bit is expectation. I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, so then they, their, their driver is getting that money back that they've just lost. Mm. So the decisions and chasing that money uh, are going to be flawed and they're actually going to come from a place of being emotional instead of being rational. So that's why the self-awareness bit and the pause at the beginning of, okay, why am, what am I wanting to do? Right, I'm frustrated. And we can all have disappointment after a loss. We can all be you know, annoyed or a little bit, you know, frustrated. But the difference is, uh, like the, ref I think the Spencer calls it the refractory period. It, it, it's how quick you can get over that. So for me, yeah, you might be a bit annoyed, pissed off. It's like, okay, great, bang, over it. Doesn't affect. There's no revenge trade, but so many will fall into the. I need to chase that. I need to get that back, and then we all know where that ends. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I think the bedrock of everything here is the expectation that someone joins something or let's say it's trading they start it with. You know, if they come into thinking this is going to be easy, I see everyone, you know, the top of the iceberg, all my social media feed is the top 1% of people winning. Um, and then they find it's hard. That's where stress comes from. If they went into something saying, hey, this is going to be hard at first and it's hard, they're like, oh, it's hard. They did tell me it was going to be hard. So that's okay. Um, and that's what I try and one of my things I say is there's a quote, it's easy when you know how. I find most of what I do in the trading space easy, but it's because I know how. And there was a time where I didn't know how, but I didn't give up and I kept learning to make sure I do know. So it's okay to say it's easy, but that comes from a place of when you know. If that makes sense. Mm. You don't know until you know. Is, uh, is and you don't know what you don't know. And then, yeah. then, then, you, then you look into, so the other things of the decision-making is this growth mindset, fixed mindset, mm. not knowing what you don't know. But critical thinking in what we do or as traders is massive too. And being aware of the cognitive biases that are going to trick our minds. So it's like traders might have a bias or an opinion where they think they can predict the future. That's not what, and that's not how I trade. I don't believe that's a thing. I just believe that that's just probability and trying to predict heads when you're tossing a coin. Well, you're not predicting. It's just you stand a 50% chance of being right. Um, but I've lost my trail of thought a little bit there. Um, yeah, we're probability. Talking, we're, we're, we're talking through the differences that make uh, the, the pitfalls that traders fall into, the, what makes them successful. Oh, yeah, the cognitive fall. biases, yeah. No. So if someone believes something's going to happen, then confirmational bias will kick in and they'll seek out all the information and people that support their view and totally ignore everything that doesn't. There's there's one bias. There's the bandwagon effect. Everyone's doing that over there. Oh, I'm going to go and do that too. Um, and there's so many more. But if you're trying to make decisions or review data or review information, you have to be aware of the traps that you might fall into. Like free trials, right? I'm a big believer that a free trial is bullshit in, the, excuse my language, in, in, in this space. Because what's a free, what, what, what's trying something for five days? Five days is absolutely nothing, good or bad. So someone could join, have a great five days, 
And then they think, wow, this is amazing. This is easy. And then that totally thwarts the week after when something goes wrong in the market or they take a loss or the, or the month after. And likewise, someone will join and go, oh, this is rubbish. I've taken a loss this week. But the other 51 weeks of the year, they might not. So then you've got outcome bias and recency bias. And it's like, hey, you, your logic and your thinking is totally flawed. Um, but that's sort of why people need to do this work and why I spend a lot of time trying to do the trainings on this stuff. But people don't, most of the people aren't bothered because they think it's, ah, oh, yeah, now I need to focus over here, which is the strategy. Well, you've not got a foundation, whatever strategy you trade, to have or earn the right, I guess, for future success. And that's yeah. the same in business, right? And it's the same in, in anything we go and achieve. Um, this trading's a peak performance game. Only the top 1% to 5% of those who participate win in the profit in the long term. You know, success in business, success in sport, boxing, like yourself, you know, the, the, it's a peak performance game. So you've got to have a peak performance mindset. Um, nothing else is going to cut it because anybody can get lucky in a day or a week or a month. But to do it over a period of time, a period of years or months is a different ball game. Yeah. And that's where you start to look at um the real champions aren't ones that win a world title one off it's ones that can keep the title yeah. you know like if you if you it's all well and good having one good month and then it all falls apart and then you're never able to get there again but if you can be consistent and show up again and again and and here's a, a, a real secret to peak performance in in my view it's the ability to not feel well and perform anyway it's the yeah. ability to be insecure and triggered and upset and fear and doubt and all those things and still show up and find a way to win that mm. that really is is part of the secret people seem to think that high performers don't experience stress or anxiousness or yeah or, doubt or whatever no, no, they experience it just as much as you do it's their response to it and how they handle it and how they manage it and how they can make those tweaks so then the next decisions that they make aren't impacted by the emotions and everything that was going on before that yeah so then it goes forward and forward and forward and i think that's the journey that some people will just quit at and not continue and reflect learn make adjustments so although i've got things handled now with like my mindset game and awareness of all that there was a time when i didn't so it's only through failure that progress is made hence power stands for progress overcome win they're three words that were like prevalent to what i was trying to push it's like oh they spell power and that's quite cool um so if people have a choice after a setback to reflect learn take new action or not, right? Um, and like, even if a champion was to lose a world title, I guess greatness and legacy comes from those that, hey, they're humble in defeat, humble in victory, know where they've gone wrong, go back to the drawing board, come back with a new level of awareness, skill, you know, and, and, and do something with it then. And um, one of the killer questions that I encourage people to reflect upon in this decision-making thing is, how would I feel if, because I found, I, I find it's quite a grounding little reflective question because when some, like when that trader takes that loss and then they're wanting to revenge trade, if they ask themselves, how am I going to feel if I revenge trade and then lose again? How would I feel if I then did lose again? Well, I'm probably going to risk my whole account or blow my pot. How would I feel if I won that trade, but I feel, I feel great relief. But then, so it's like the domino effect of it's can't, a decision can't be one layer deep. It's like, you've got to imagine you're, you're playing chess and you've got to anticipate three or four moves ahead because whatever you decide is going to have a consequence by way of an emotion or a feeling or a reaction. And then there's another one. And then there's another one that we might take. So if you can take a moment and project into that, possible future you can then make more you know you can make better decisions you know ultimately but if you don't then um yeah you'll get humbled in whatever it is you're doing at, at a certain point yeah i do talk a lot about decision making but the step before that which is you're managing your emotional state before you make a decision mm -hmm. and i think it's 
particularly in the mindset world, it's something that's very, very underlooked, which is uh, how are you managing your emotional minds, your emotional state and your ability to perceive what's actually happening before you make big decisions yeah and it's only until we can really understand okay well if i am somebody that is more prone to anxiousness or more prone to scarcity versus abundance or on the flip side maybe i'm overly wired towards abundance and i don't actually see you know what's yeah. going on and i yeah. and i and i just assume everything's going to be fine and sometimes that leads me down to dark alleys is understanding okay well the good old phrase know thyself knowing who you are and how you the, the default patterns you tend to fall into and some of those default patterns will be very powerful so my my default pattern is when i speak i engage and people want to sign up so i need to do more of that like that's really a, a really positive pattern but uh, a negative pattern will be if i've got too much on i can become very overwhelmed and stressed mm. thus uh my decisions become yeah. black and white but decisions often in trading they're black and white you make the trade or you don't but often in business they're not black and white sometimes there's a little bit of gray sometimes you need to yeah. learn to marinate on a problem and go well, okay let me just let that problem and that solution just marinate for a little bit and we'll see what we can come up with and what we can build but it's such an underrated thing is is understanding okay how can i manage my emotions before i make a decision that decision might be making a trade that might the decision might be and i'd love to talk a little bit about um people pleasing like taking yeah. on too much and going yes and that was a big thing that you weren't even aware of but was taking up time and then once we gave you that frame of oh that's what this is well then you win back time you win bandwidth would you be able to yeah. talk a little bit about how that was showing up yeah i think um wanting to please people pleasing that gratification that feeling of they're gonna think i'm cool and i'm helpful and i'm you know whatever um I think the killer bit for that was the detrimental effect that actually has on the other person. Um, because it's, well, there's two things and the energy that you're not managing or the capacity that you've lost in trying to do things you maybe don't want to do that aren't really serving you. That's taken up your time that you should be doing other shit with. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. So for me checking in with, hang on by doing this stuff, or trying to take over that and do that, I'm creating a dependence instead of them having an independence. I'm not actually helping. And it's taking my thoughts, brain power, energy, time away from, you know, stuff that's going to create leverage for me. Now that's on one side, it's been aware of that to be a little bit more selfish at times, but checking in with is this really serving me or not and that you know as that was really powerful so what i found now is i've got so much more capacity and awareness over that um there can still be traps at times like one of the things that i'm quite aware of now is if you're having a good day you, you know maybe you're in a good mood you're tapping into flow and someone asks you to do something or an invitation someone and you're like you don't really want to but when you're in that state you're more likely to say yes to shit when you want to say no mm. so sometimes you actually might need a pause to reflect to bite you know to really it's very easy to say yes to stuff when you're in that mood state um and then it isn't until you come out and it's like oh, why did i say yes to that um so yeah i think again it's just the awareness of those things now it's like oh i might your subconscious might kick in and you might feel like, oh, I'm about to offer to do something. I don't you know. No. Okay. And saying no is great. It creates so much more capacity and brain power for you to um, get really clear over what your high leverage activities are in, in business or, or day to day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And often we try and cling to stuff because either a it makes us feel good but if i say yes yeah. and i help that person I, I i feel enough and i feel validated or yeah, b, all of that, yeah. fear they can't do it as good as me what if they fuck this up what if they get it wrong what if yeah uh, so then you step in but actually as a, as a high performer a lot of it isn't time management people often come to me and say i need to get better at time management but it's actually energy management where are you spending mm, priority time? management yeah 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 energy management yeah yeah where are you spending your energy you know you've only got so many fucks that you can give where are you yeah. giving them and if you're giving them to the wrong things you're only going to attract more of those things and it's only when you make those those psychological breakthroughs where you really go ah i'm clinging on to that because of this, i'm scared 
well, I'm clinging on to that because there's a secondary gain. What mm. is the secondary gain of this behavior or this thought or this feeling? And when you start to rebreathe into that, and you go, okay, well, on that sense, maybe I don't need to do everything. Yeah. Maybe I actually need to get better. Everybody talks about delegation. Yeah, you've got to delegate, 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 but some stuff. And letting go. Yeah. And letting, maybe, I, maybe I can let that go. And maybe the fact that someone can do that 70 or 80% as well as what I might do or think I can do is absolutely fine. But hey, here's the, here's the other caveat. Some people do it bloody better. And mm. it's about making sure that you're not trying to force round pegs through square holes and, and you empower others to actually surprise you. Because if you try and control shit, they're not going to A, feel empowered and B, they're not going to be allowed to surprise you. Um, you know, I've, I've got various sort of memories of where I've just gone, right, if you can deliver on that for me, this is sort of what I've got in mind, da, 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 but I'll leave it, you know, check in with me here. And it's like, whoa, that's well better than anything I'd have ever done. Um, and that's great. You know, that, that moves everything forward in, in business or whatever it is you're doing. But if you try and do everything, um, you'll end up doing it less good than, than what others can do too. Yeah. So we talked about this before, and I talked about this a lot on the podcast, is with the version of you six months ago, uh, I, I, I say it pretty ruthlessly and ruthlessly, which is for me when I'm journaling on this, would Kieran today kick the fuck out of Kieran six months ago? <laughs> you don't have to be as brutal as that. It could be, do I, am I better than the person I was then? If you look at, say, the Darren that was at the beginning of the TMP process, where he is now, and he's going to describe them to as fighters, as entrepreneurs, or as individuals. How would you describe those two? Yeah, um, very different, very different. Um, I also do some martial arts training, so I'd like to think that if my instructor watches some of this, that the six months of me now versus previous would definitely um, win in a fight. Um, I, I think it's more capacity, stress, clarity, energy, leverage, um, getting more shit done, but in a way that isn't, you know, I've just launched, we've just launched a new business. I'm trying to grow power into almost running without me. Um, we're moving house. We, I've got five daughters. We took on two pups, I've got three dogs. Um, and often you'll show me the mirror and be like, Darren, are you fucking sure? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And um, I remember the, the one of the tattoo things or one of the present things is, well, what, what did you expect? And um, it's such a sobering, you know, so when the puppies were challenging when they first come and, well, they still are at times, but it's like, well, what did we, what did we expect? Did we expect it to be easy? No. Cause that's flawed. And then, and then the surrender word kicks in and, and I live by surrender. Now it's, Hey, can't change that. It is what it is. Accept it, move on. And, and, and that reduces, I think if you try and fight shit, you know, you get that. So I think if I look at me six months ago, would I surrender? No, I would fight it. Would, would I have had maybe some flawed expectation at times? Yes. Would I ask for help? No. Have I learned to ask for help? Yes. Um, and when we look at kingship, I'm fascinated by that model. I did Men Without Masks um, a couple of years ago now, which was great. And that's really focused on the four key archetypes of man. And you speak about it loads too. So when, we're, when we tap into that awareness of our king, so warrior, yeah, I can batter the previous exposure of me. I'm pretty sure. Checking in with the overactive lover or that gratification or those needs wants um, the king brings it all together. And, and yeah, the magician for creativity, if you're stressed, overwhelmed, you're not going to tap into flow and new ideas and everything too. So yeah, in so many different ways, the previous version gets smashed. Um, but it, that previous ver version is probably going to be more burnt out, overwhelmed, I uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have to be able to have handled what I've chosen to take on, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
your ability to delegate well i've the key differences i've noticed is your ability to not take everything on so delegate and, and let go mm-hmm. and, and move more to a mentorship role versus like a management role with the people in your life that's not just professionally but in a, in a personal setting yeah uh, that, that's been a big shift you know taking on two puppies selling a house buying a house launching a new company uh, oh and just casually scaling your other company at, at a speed you know when you look at it that way like your ability to be resilient and be with water and get back to king if we put all of this stuff on you at the beginning of the process i think it would have been a hell of a lot harder and you might have yeah. underneath the weight Whereas now you're in a place where it's like, look, I, I, I make each decision, I take each action step, I've stepped back into my king, and off I go. And it yeah. is the ability to work with your boardroom and raise your hand and ask for help and go, okay, yeah, this this could really help me. Or actually, what do you think? Am, am, am I am I blind to that? The ability also to have that that um, as a specific word I'm looking for in my vocabulary, um, self regulate. So your mm. ability to self-regulate and go, okay, well, hang on a minute. Actually, is that necessary? Is that not necessary? Um, and then also the challenge. So we build up all of these beliefs about what yeah. we're able to do and what we can't do. And we set our own glass ceilings. And as you start to break through the mold of, well, why do I think and feel like that? Well, the next thing you know, you unconsciously start stepping into decisions and taking actions where you know, oh, fuck it. Like, what have I got to lose? Right, let's go. And that's really what I'm starting to see now, which is, which is fabulous. Yeah, and I think it's accepting that, hey, perfection doesn't exist. None of us are perfect. We'll never be perfect. There'll be times where stress still happens. There's still a bit of overwhelm at times. There's still, you know, there's always going to be challenge. But I guess, again, the ability to your threshold of handling more and been able to come back to a, a presence or a grounding to then recalibrate almost and go, okay, there was a learning or a lesson there. Um, and, and, and then move forward again, because ultimately what we want to always aspire to, I guess, to achieve is that the next six months version smashes the fuck out of this current version, but that doesn't happen through meandering. It doesn't happen through anything other than challenge, reflection, growth, curiosity, right? Yeah. Well, it always comes down to meaning and purpose. Like, why are you doing this? Like, what's mm. the point? And you've got some very big reasons as to why you're building what you're building. And if you can do that and enjoy the journey and have fun and explore yeah. and really see what's going on, then, you know, you really do start to build that. But there's a funny, I um, can't remember the diagram. My mentors have drawn it to me many times um, where you go into something new and you make some big realizations and you go right to the top of the, like imagine there's a graph, right? Yeah. Right at the beginning of the graph goes right to the top, new begins. Oh my God, the world was this way. Now it's this way. Like, this is amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm great. And then right at the top of that, that peak, there is the, um, I've sussed it. The bit. Dunning-Kruger effect, right? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then afterwards you go falling down into that, yeah. into that trap of, oh my God, like it's all caught. What have I done? Like, where am I at? Oh my, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I don't know it. And then, then you've got to go back up and it's going, all right, okay, well, what's, what's really this about? And that's something I always try and instill in, you know, in all of our clients is this sense of total mental performance. Isn't the absence of suffering. It isn't the absence of emotion. It isn't the absence of any of those things. It's your ability to navigate your suffering, navigate those thoughts, those feelings, those emotions yeah. and get shit done anyway in spite of that and when you start to learn oh okay so it's okay to be anxious and we need them emotions right no it's like i remember you're talking about fear on i think one of your social media stuff and it's like we'd be pretty screwed without fear and you know in trading we get fear and we get greed and i guess there's extremities of both well without a little bit of a feeling of wanting more if that's greed or not then would never achieve more but without fear you'd lose your house uh, you know you'd over bet you would have no consequence so it's it's still doing it in the absence of those things and not in the you know a successful top one percent five percent trader still has fear but they've but they've you know uh, they've managed it they, they, they know what their bandwidth is on that um so yeah you know and feeling anxious could be you know there's so many different things but we, we need them right we need them emotions yeah otherwise also life gets pretty boring 
you know like think about periods of your life where there hasn't really been any there's been an absence of emotion either a you've blunted all your emotions this is excluding serious depression and, and mental health issues but you know you've been going for a period of your career where there's like nothing really going on and it stagnates and you can't <coughs> yeah what point so you need a little bit of anger now. you need a little bit of fear a little bit of doubt a little bit of worry to to, to keep things interesting because yeah. otherwise you you just get bored particularly if you have a very bright curious uh and ambitious mind you need a little bit of that yeah. but too much to the point where it impacts your performance and it's holding you back and you start procrastinating or you sat there looking at your screen going, well, how am I going to generate all this business? I, what am I doing? And I can't do this or I'm not the person that can pull this off or yeah. who am I, who am I, who am I? Well, that's when those emotions aren't helpful. And an untrained mind is a recipe for disaster and chaos because you, everything you experience comes through the mind and the way that you feel. Every single decision you make comes through the mind and how you feel. And you've got to really understand, and a lot of people don't, they think mental performance or mindsets is fluffy stuff, but you are the creator of your own reality. You're the creator of your own experience. And until you can nail that inner game, it's going to be much harder to nail the outside world. Yeah. And it's just, just like the chimp work, right? You know, and the chimp paradox model and, and how you can metaphorically separate your you know your chimp brain and that work within our community and the mastermind that you did was was great um you know and i know you've got a you've got a chimp right you know yeah, someone bought you the cuddly toy caesar caesar that's it and um again but you got to have the awareness first everything's an awareness everything's curious everything's seeking out that learning to do it and um without it we're leading meandering subconscious average you know uh lives yeah that's it so forget us as a team forget my my uh, me forget all of that but what does the phrase total mental performance mean to darren if you had total mental performance how would you know i think it's balance so on our last couple of sessions we explored different things that weren't business related. Most, a lot of it previously was more business priorities flow, you know, uh, but it's like, Hey, do you know what? Being a better husband, being a better dad to still, and again, perfection doesn't exist. There's always going to be ways to be better in everything. And it's like, so total is everything. It's not just being good at business and having blind sides and consequences to everything else. Um, or the other way around or whatever. So yeah, I think, I think total mental performance is balance, clarity, energy, and achieving more than you would. It's ra raising the bar, you know, we can be here and we can get to there, but we need to get to there without having a negative effect, taking it off somewhere else. So I guess the total, it's not just one area of your life. I guess a lot of people join because they want to, unlock more in business and they're already doing well, but they want to do even better and they want to tap into more flow and work out what's driving them and the gratification and all of that stuff. We don't want to just up uplift one. We want to uplift the whole thing. So, um, that's what it would, that's the, probably the best way I could think to describing it. We can't rob Peter for Paul and just have an improvement here, but it's all of it. Let's lift fucking all of it. Um, and that's why the, the four archetypes of man and tapping into king helps look at that boardroom and make sure there's balance and um, yeah, what to, what to improve and where. Yeah, that's it. What would you say to anybody that's on the fence about doing some of this work or they've been, they've been thinking about it for a while, but they're like, ah, is it, is it really going to change, move the needle for my business or is this really going to help me? Like a lot of people look at men's performance and TMP and they're like, ah, oh, it's an unknown. I've never done that type of work or coaching before. What mm. would you say to, to those individuals? I think people need to let go of some stigmas in and around this work. If it's men's work or coaching or mentorship or whatever you want to call it. And I think growth will only come from vulnerability. And 
as men, it's tough to be vulnerable at times, but if you can cry and try and find a, a space or a, um, you know, or, or a company like yourselves that offer that when you do, you unlock new outcomes. So if you come into it without, if you come in, if you come into anything with a fixed mindset, not wanting to be vulnerable with no curiosity, then nothing's going to work. But if you're in business and you're already in the, you know, wanting to unlock more, you've already got the curiosity, you've already got the growth mindset. Maybe it's taken a leap of faith to go into it and go, hey, I don't know what I don't know. There's there's new levels, new devils and new levels that you haven't unlocked yet, but they're not going to get unlocked unless you delve in. Um, and there's a lot of times where you've got to, again, delve into self-awareness again, but but you got to be vulnerable and go, yeah, actually I'm feeling that there was this, you know, um, but you can only do that in this sort of space as well. Difficult. I don't think it exists in any other format, um, to this level anyway. Yeah, that's it. So where can everyone find you? Where can everybody get on, uh, drop you a message or get in touch? Uh, yep. So, um, I'm on Instagram, um, pow underscore remove the guesswork. It used to be, the Darren show, but I'm trying to move the business into a business instead of the personal brand that it probably started with there. Um, yeah, just trying to add value and help where we can. Uh, and if people are curious about what we do or trading or what we have to share, then feel free to follow the page or drop us a DM or anything like that. Amazing. Team, if you found this episode helpful, please share it to your story, share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Uh, we're looking to bring this this type of content out to the world, helping people realize you can be a high performer and still experience stress and challenging emotions and fear and doubt and still be successful and still find a way to win. Darren, mate, uh, I truly, truly appreciate you. I deeply enjoyed all the work we've done together. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on.